it's your girl gel beauty 87 here and today we are going to get into the new pat mcgrath quad so um i got these in the mail tuesday i want to say but um one huge problem came along with that now remember a highlighter launched with this when um i ordered the what do you call it um when i ordered this and my highlighter didn't come in my package so i have to wait for the highlighters so you won't see the highlight in this video unfortunately i wanted to get them all done out the way so i could rank all my holiday stuff at one time it, but i guess it worked out because you know i technically still won't be able to because i have to wait for natasha to know to drop her second pellet on like november the 4th so i'm hoping around like thanksgiving i can finally have all the stuff that i buy for the holidays to be ranked but let's talk about these lovely little palettes right here so y'all know my thirsty self had to get all three. I have the ones from last year. Did I bring them over here? I did not. So I have the ones from last year. I'll bring them over here when we get ready to do swatch comparisons and all that. Which will be at the end. Um, I brought some other palettes over here though. I brought these two palettes because I'm going to need some mattes. Because if you all remember, like there's mattes in some of them, but there's not mattes in all of them. So I'm probably going to just use the dark star one. And then I'll use this little small divine one for the last palette that's literally just all shimmers. I don't think I'm necessarily going to need the um, bronze temptation, but I brought it over here just in case. So, and I also brought over the new holiday palette because I'm thinking about doing a palette mashup with one of these with that. But let's open them up and kind of get into what's going on. So, like I said, the thirst bucket of me had to have all three. So, I did just that. I bought all three. And it's so funny because Kinky Sweat did the same thing I did. She bought them all individually and then we found out there was like a, you know... A bundle after the fact but i was like it's cool whatever it does not matter the point is i got all three of them and i didn't know if it was gonna sell out or not so i was like i didn't want to risk it i mean i know what the way the economy is I, I probably could risk it and just went ahead and got it because i think they still have like all three of them in stock now i know this last one right here is not on sephora it's literally just on um pat mcgrath's website but the weird thing is like the highlighter was on sephora's website but now the highlighter isn't up there anymore either so i don't know what's going on with that I don't know if they um, thought they were going to get it in time and then they didn't get it in time or what. But at the same time, it's like maybe they did because, I wa like I said, I wa I'm, I'm sorry I didn't tell y'all this yet. But I talked to um, Dr. Ash and her makeup after I watched her video and I was telling her how, you know, I um, ordered the highlighter at the same time I ordered all the quads. But I got all the quads and I didn't get the highlighter. And she was like, some people been getting double stuff and then some people ain't been getting stuff in the same orders and they mailed out stuff separately. Like I know Mills Hobson said they mailed out her highlighter separately from her... Um, what do you call it? Um, her, her gift set or whatever, because she bought like the whole set, um, of the whole holiday collection. I didn't do that. I just bought pieces that I wanted because I didn't want to have to wait for the whole thing to show up. Even though I probably could have just waited for the whole thing to show up, but I still wouldn't have the highlighter after the fact. But I'd rather just have my video up ahead of time and go on with it. But whatever. Let's get into it. So the, this is the, which one is this? This is the um blue one. I don't. I threw the box a little bit, so I don't remember. Um, it's called Interstellar Icon. So this is the um, one I told y'all I wanted to compare to the um, Charlotte Tilbury with the Diamond Dazzles. Because look at that. I feel like it looks really similar to that. So this is the one we'll be comparing to the other quads, mostly at the end. So remember, I did the Shantakai video. If y'all want to see that, I'll try to remember link it up above. But I feel like this one looks really similar to the one I just showed you. And then, of course, you've already seen this one in the Charlotte Tilbury video. So... This is the one um, I'm probably going to use first. I'm going to try to use them in the order I ordered them, which is like first, second, and third. The only thing is I'd rather um, not necessarily use the all shimmer one last, but, you know, whatever. We'll see about that. Um, then the second one is called Risque Rose. That's this one right here. I like the fact that she put labels on the back of the palette this time as opposed to the little cards. But I do like the packaging of the um, 2019 ones better with the ties on it. Because I just thought that one looked cooler than just this plain box. But, you know, it's fine because it cuts down on cost. And, you know, at the end of the day, we're not using the packaging. So, it's fine. Um, this is what it looks like on the inside. I heard this is a new formula that she doesn't have in any other palette. So, I was excited to see that. So, this is what it looks like on the inside. I feel like I'll be able to make a nice little look with this right here. Close up this other one. And then the last one, let me see, what's what is the name of it? Um, the last one is Flora Fantasia. And I believe this one is just an all shimmer one. I don't think it's a blit. Wait, sorry, no, it's not all shimmer. There's one matte in here, but it's a matte I can't use, so that's why I'll be using the um 
the last Pat McGrath six pan palette with this one because as you can see, what the fuck am I supposed to do with that? There's, there's nothing I can do with that. So we're going to use this with this one. And then the first one didn't have any mattes in it, which is why we're going to use the Dark Star palette. So we're going to get into the first one first. I'll do this one second, even though I want to do this one last. But I'm gonna, like I said, I'm going to go in the order that I got them in. So I will be doing this one last. So let us get started now that I have rambled on. They're $58 a piece. And they come with how much product? Let me see. It says 0 0.6 ounces of each one. And I wonder how that compares to the older ones. Let me go get it real quick. So these right here, um, does it say on the back of the box? Or do I have to open it up and do that whole thing? I'm going to have to open it up and do that whole thing. I only bought two of the three that they had last year just because the other one was like really boring and it was classic like brown and gold and red shades. And I didn't want to risk the red not being the red I thought it was. So like we nothing to do that. Oh, it's on the front. Okay, so this one is 1 .5, 0 0.05 ounces. So you actually get... More product in the um, new ones than you do in the old ones, it seems like. Hmm, that's interesting. But I definitely can say just off bat, I seem to like these more because I feel like they're better for me to pair with my matte palette. I don't know why I keep throwing stuff over there. Well, I do it because I know I don't have that much space over here where I am. Sorry, I'm finally try to stop rambling like, and get life in order and just get this together. So, if y'all don't remember, this is what this palette looks like. And, um... And take the card out so we're probably just gonna go with like the black shade and then just use a couple of the shimmers and call it a day um i think they said this is a repeat sh i think th what is this one i know there's a repeat shade in this one wait is this the right one there's a repeat shade in this one. It's called blue blood they say it's in the decadence palette i own the decadence palette and then i own that small um palette is supposed to have just certain shades from the Deccan's palette so I had that shade like three times over this um blue blood shade but I'm like it's cool it's fine with me whatever I'm going to take the classic primer potion and use this on my eyes today just because I'm trying to use it up I feel like I've had this thing for like years and still didn't use up so I'm like good god so I'm gonna take that on both these my eyeballs and get started Yes, I don't know what's going on with Pat McGrath shipping, but I'm glad that they said they're going to ship out my highlighter. And they got back to me fast about, you know, not shipping my product and all that. So I definitely uh, appreciate that because I've told y'all horror stories about other brands that didn't respond in time fast or just didn't respond at all. So I definitely don't appreciate it because, like, you, you took my money. So you should be able to respond to me when I message you. So I'm still waiting on the money to come back um, from the Charlotte Tilbury highlighter that I returned since they didn't, um, since it showed up shattered and they never responded to me about what to do when it came to that. I just mailed it back like, um, you need to run my money back. I'm trying to debate if I want to buy it again during the Sephora sale just so I can compare it to all the other holiday highlighters that came out. Especially since I can get it at a discount. Because it wasn't like it looks super bad. It's just when you first put it on. To me, it looks really icy. But after like warms up to your skin, then it ends up looking halfway decent and okay. So, I don't know. Anyway, we're going to start off with the black shade right here. And, y'all, I bought some more brushes from, um, who are these people? Um, Sigma, of course. So, I got me another E45, an E33, and an E27. Those are like three of my personal favorite brushes. So I'm going to go on my E45, my old one. As you can see, it's like this thing is abused. I have one at home and then I have one here. And sorry, now I have two here. Because I have plenty of brushes at home to choose from. So I figured I should have the same amount here. So I'm thinking about um, dusting the gray over the top of this black after we put it all in the crease. And then just... You know, using the um, classic shades I would use. So, I'm thinking about um, using that, what is the shade? Um, what did I tell y'all? Blue Blood. All over, um, toward the back of the lid. And then put the um, bronzy shade toward the front. And then maybe trying to put, like, the blue shade on the lower lash line. And the more beige shade in the crease. Just because I feel like y'all expect me to put the blue all over the lid. And, I mean, like, I'm totally down for that. I'll probably do, like, my blue look on Instagram, of course. Because y'all know it's just my vibe. But 
you know, I figured you start off by trying to use other shades I wouldn't normally use. So I'm like, if I'm going to do that, I probably shouldn't dust the gray over the top of this black. So I'm probably going to scrap that idea and just put blue blood and that brown shade I talked about on the lid. So it's looking pretty good as far as blending goes with that. So let's take a clean brush as usual. I'm going to just take this AOA Studio brush from um, Shop Mise. This is part of, what is this, Foam Ink collection that they have, like 10 bucks or something. And I actually liked that collection. They had a few decent brushes in it, and they actually feel pretty soft and nice, especially for, I think, like 10 bucks or something. And they give you, I think, a roll to put the brushes in. I'm not feeling that whole part, but, you know. Okay, so let's swatch. The only thing is they're two different finishes. So see, like, this one right here is um, Divine Dahlia, and then there's Blue Blood. So I'm thinking maybe I should put Blue Blood on the outer part, because I feel like the real shimmery part should be toward the front, so... Let's swatch um, two shades. We're going to use these two. Yeah, see, blue, um, Black Dahlia is more of a, sorry, not Blue Blood is more of a satin type finish. And this is more of like a shimmery S type finish. And it has like green and gold particles in it. So I definitely want to put that one toward the front. So we're going to start off with that one toward the back, the other one toward the front. Then I'll swatch the other two just because we're here. And this is definitely in the corner how I look at that. Like, I might mash it on top of, um, that um dahlia shade as well and y'all know i'm definitely gonna use this one i'm just have to use it another time on the lower lash line like i said but since i have to do like three looks i don't think we're gonna use it on the lower lash line i don't know and since i have um so many eye looks to do which is three different ones i'm only going to compare the two Chantecaille ones in here and then the rest of them if i have any um swatch comparisons to them i have to do that um on ig so don't look for that here. Just look for it on IG. Let's see. Um, I'm going to take... Crap. I'm over here dropping brushes. It's a mess. It's a mess. I'm going to take this Alter Ego brush. And just take the blue blood shade we talked about and put that toward the back of the eye. Like we talked about just now. So. I'm so upset like they didn't send my highlighter because like I wanted to have that out the way because I was going to do that highlighter today and then I was going to do the Natasha Denona one tomorrow and then that way I'd have my idea on all of them and then when November came because of my birthday is when I'm going to order all my stuff from the uh, Sephora VIB sales so I'm going to order all that on the, probably November the 4th even though my birthday is November the 8th I'm going to just order when Natasha Denona palettes come up and hopefully I'll get it like um that Monday after my birthday Cause that's my present to myself, just buying a whole bunch of crap from Sephora. Because, you know, they're, they're going into phase, back to phase three here in Chicago. So that means you can't go to, like, any bars. And I think, like, if, you're, if your bar doesn't serve food, then they're going to have to, like, I think, be closed down to customers completely again. So it's like, we going back, y'all. Because the COVID cases are rising. So my son's school had, like, four kids that had COVID in it. So thank goodness he's been at home because I told y'all mommy wasn't playing that. He was sitting up in the house. He's mad about not being able to school, but it's like, you know, I, I'd rather you not go to school and have to be worried about that. Because sure enough, four kids, like, have, and I think they're like two staff members have on top of that. So I'm like, oh, no. You definitely stay at home now, y'all. I don't know what you thought. So, I mean, it's a nice little neutrally type eye for people who like neutrally type eyes that's another reason i wanted to do it because i'm like i know everybody not gonna just automatically be like me like bam they got a blue let's use it i mean i'm not necessarily excited about this eye but the good thing is i don't have to keep it on i can take it off and then the last look i do is the look that's gonna be the thumbnail i'm gonna have to sit here and take it though because you know it's like i told y'all it's like nine something tonight so we're gonna no, I'm trying to decide if I want to put black in the waterline, but since I'm doing like a pink look last, I don't know if I want to put black in the waterline, so we're just going to leave it alone. Um, let's take this inner corner highlight and put it in there. I already swatched the purple, so I don't think I'm going to try to put it on the lower lash line because I don't want to mess up the concealer down there, even though I don't really plan on like doing any of the eye looks tonight. I'm just not trying to risk it. Oh, it looks like it has a pink shift in this. When I'm putting it on my eye now, I feel like I see like a... It's a champagne and then like a nice pink shift to it. 
It doesn't get brightest in the inner corner, though, which is what we want it to, you know. There you go. This is the finish I look for the first time. I mean, it's okay. I think I'm just not excited because I feel like it's quite neutral, and y'all know that's never my vibe, so. <clears throat> God, excuse me. Okay, so this is the Interstellar iPod quad, and this is the eye that we created with it, so. Put this one to the side for tomorrow. Now, tomorrow I'm planning on filming the Rare Beauty stuff. So, I probably won't get into this Pat McGrath until, like, Sunday morning. Um, where's the little plastic? Oh, here it is. Because I, I need my little plastic thing so I know the names. Oh, since we're here, let's swatch the two that look similar out of this palette. And then we'll go into the next one. So, this one right here is called Metamorphosis, I believe. And as you can see, it's not exactly the same. It's darker than this one is. And, of course, you know I got to swatch Interstellar, the blue. I feel like they have a similar shift, but there's just like different glitters and one has a deeper base than the other one. Because see, this is Interstellar. The base on that one is di deeper than this one, but they both have that blue to like purple shift. This one is like just a darker purple from Jump. So those are swatches of that. Let me go ahead and wipe this off my hand. Oh crap, I didn't swatch the gold. The other gold was lighter than that one though, so I figure that's fine. And I can swatch that, like I said, on um, IG. Like I said, we're going to swatch these toward the end. So, again, I don't know why I threw that over there. Because I got to swatch all three of these at the end to compare the differences of them. But next, we're going to get into the Risqué Rose. We're going to put that one on this eye. And I'm literally just going to use the four shades in here. So, we're going to put this toward the outer V. Y'all already know I'm going to put this in the crease at the top. This is most likely going to be our lid shade. And then this is going to be our in the corner situation so let's get started on that so i am going to take this luxy sorry luxy beauty mini angled 131 brush just start putting it right here i know how gorgeous that brown is and how easily it blends like yes mother now everybody's trying to do the um natasha denona um palette because everybody's just like you know multi-chromes and tri-chromes been out here forever with um indie brands so a lot of the girls that do indie videos i've noticed are just trying to dupe her palette and i'm like it's a good point because like that scarborough shade y'all know i just bought the liquid of it so i'm like if i buy you know and you know, i feel like if i just use the lila palette and then buy like two more of those liquid shadows that she has individually i can like have the same palette and the lila palette was 50 percent off when i bought it so even with buying the glitters it would still be cheaper than you know i mean not glitters but the trial chrome It'll still be cheaper than the palette. I'm going to go ahead and buy it and review it just because, you know, I want to see how the quality is going to be on the powder trichrome versus the um, liquid. And I'm definitely going to do a comparison of Scarborough to that one. I might do a comparison of Ultraviolet as well because I do have that one in my card to try out. Look how nice that outer view looks, girl. But yeah, so I'm like, I'm intrigued. And because I can get it at a discount, I'm definitely going to go ahead and get it. But I'm like, if I wasn't getting it at a discount, I don't know if I would necessarily get it because I do agree with them. Like, a lot of indie brands sell trichromes and, you know, multi-chromes. Like, the brand, I, I just ordered the Terra um, Moon Cosmetics um, Holiday Palette. And, and now, mind you, it's a pre-order. And I hate pre-orders because it's like, I don't get it till like, 500 years from now. But it's like, I have to give my money now. So, that's the only thing I don't like about those. But anyway, the point is, they make a lot of um, multi-chromes. And that's just the way they do business in general. Like, they always make you, like, do a pre-order on certain things. Like all their trial chromes or multi chromes or whatever, they always make you do pre orders on, which is why I obviously never ordered them because I'm just like, I don't like giving my money ahead of time and waiting five million years to get a product in there. But the palette looked nice. I was like, I'll give them a chance. I wanted to try their mattes, their shimmers, and um, I've only had some dual chromes from them, and there's one dual chrome in the palette. So I was like, I'll try it just mainly so I can try their mattes. And I don't want to have to buy like the shades individually. When I could just buy the curated palette. So I just went ahead and did that. So we'll see that soon. But the point is, like, they make lots of tr trial chromes and dual chromes. Then there's JD Glow. They make a whole bunch of trial chromes and dual chromes. So it's like all these brands that have been doing this for 500 years, like, you could easily just buy two or three from them. Just take the Lila palette that you already own if you're a Natasha Denona person. And then you don't need to buy that palette. A lot of us are going to buy it just to review it because we like Natasha Denona's stuff for the most part. Um, so... I get that, but, like, 
you know, if you can't afford to, like, just go buy the dual chrome or trial chrome shades from an indie brand when they have a sale on Black Friday. And then just use, like, the purple mattes that you already have in your collection. Because from what I saw in that palette, it's like a chartreuse green and, like, some pink, um, sorry, not some purpley type mattes. But it's like, if you already got, you know, the, um, what do you call it? If you already have the Lila palette, just try to grab one, like, chartreuse green matte from, again, an indie brand along with your trial chromes or dual chromes that you can buy from them. And you don't need to buy that at all. Look how nice that's blended. Look how gorgeous that is. Like, yes, I'm loving the little gradient from going to the chocolate brown and into, into this hot-ass pink. Like, yes. Now, let's swatch these. Um, I don't need. I figure I don't need to swatch the matte, so let's swatch this shade. with Yeah, perfect in the corner. And this feels like a weird type moussey texture with like a... Oh, yes, look at that shift. Child. Oh, it seems like more of a topper S type shade. That's the vibe it's giving me. So, I'm thinking maybe I should put this underneath and then put it on top. I don't know. Let me feel that texture again. But it feels like moussey enough for you to use it on its own. So now I'm like, hmm, do I have a shade like this? I don't know if I do or not. I'm going to have to check through my other stuff and see. I forgot to bring the, um, what is it? The um, Divine Rose 2 Artistry Palette with me. So I can't use that and do a, like a comparison of this pink shade right here, unfortunately. But I can do it when I get home if you all are actually interested just to see how close they are in tone. I can just pop up a quick Instagram you know, or whatever. I'm going to take my refer number two just to be safe because I, this is a new formula and I'm not sure how well it's going to work. So I figured maybe if I use a natural hair brush to help. I don't know. I'm trying to pick it up on the brush. Let's see. Ooh, yeah, look at that. Girl. Yes, it feels... It's just gorgeous. I definitely felt like this one and the... um other one on my other eye were the ones I was going to like the best. And so far, I'm right. Like, I'm really loving this eye look right here. Like, I might shh, recreate the whole other eye when I'm done. Because look at that. Girl. Oh, and I have a uh, nude Venus on my lips. One of Pat McGrath's lip shines. And I just put on a brown like lip liner to get this nice little glossy situation. But look at this eye, girl. Y'all know this is my type of eye. Like, I'm just, I'm here for it. It's the vibe. I'm living. I'm breathing. Yes. So, let's go ahead and dust that some more. I'm just loving that shade. And this formula seems really nice because it's a nice, moussey texture. But, you know, it picks up nicely on a natural hairbrush. All right, I figured it would. And it's just looking amazing. Let's take the pink shade. I'm going in the corner. We use all the shades in here, but I still swatch the shimmery ones for you just to see if you could like see the shift and whatnot. I feel like you couldn't, but you know. I tried though, sis. I tried. So I'm definitely feeling this. I'm more than feeling this one, but you know, I feel like if I had put um what is it, blue blood all the way across and then put that shimmery shade on top, I might like this eye a little bit better. But honestly, I would just like this eye the best if I just got to put on the blue. But I was trying not to be predictable and put on the blue, which is why we put on something else. But this is the, I was about to say, Ritualistic Rose. Risque Rose, excuse me. Let's see if, um, well, no, like I said, I'll do a swatch later. So I'm not going to swatch and see if we got anything to compare to it right now. So I'm going to put it down right here. And then we'll get into the final one, which is Fleur Fantasia. This is what it is. I had to hold, I was holding it back with she's so I'm gonna have to go into this palette like I said so let me go off camera and um take both these eyes off even though I really don't want to take this one off and then we'll get into the final palette this one be right back okay y'all so I'm back um I need to prime my eye but I tried to do the swatches real quick for you so this is the quad right here and then I swatched a couple of shades I thought looked similar out of the um what is this little palette called the um the last Mothership um, mini palette she came out with, it, uh, Rose Decadence, excuse me. It doesn't say it on the front, it says it on the back, that's why I couldn't remember. So I swatched this shade to see if it would match this one. As you can see, they don't really, I mean, they're kind of close, but not close enough. And then this is Fuchsia Flame, my favorite shade out of that palette. As you can see, it's not the same as this one, so we're good. Nothing is looking exactly the same. So I'm trying to figure out how we can incorporate this one. Along with this one, I'm thinking maybe layer this one in the center of the eye 
I'm gonna put this one as the main one. I know we're gonna have dust this over the top because as you can see, I can't do nothing with that. But we're gonna start off with this shade right here and put that on the outer V because it's the darkest shade I have to go with this eye look. And as you can see, I didn't take this eye off because I wanted to see how the look I do with this quad here compares to the look I do with this quad right here. Um, I'm actually, I'm going to start off with my E27 from Sigma. Y'all know I love me a Sigma brush and they had eye brushes on sale, I think last week for like 10 bucks. But first, let us prime the eye because then I can give mother a fair shot. I feel like we're not if I don't prime it, so ahead and primer i just um use the sponge and the brush i used to conceal underneath my eyes so then that way it would um you know just clear up the rest of the um makeup that got removed when i did the side of my when i took the um eye look off but yeah so um what do you call it um y'all i was so sad because the fancy face she just did her um video on her um you know, she's doing a series of like dating videos or whatever having to do with makeup brands and i think it's a cute concept i thought it was a great idea she said people gave her lots of ideas and she's been trying to run with the ideas people gave her but it made me sad because it's like she did the one on brand she broke up with and i found out you know some sad news when it came to the brand give me glow and y'all know i stand for give me glow i love me some give me glow product but she said like she had asked her um followers about brands that they wanted her to um work with or do collabs with or whatever and i think it was between give me glow and sydney grace co so um she said her fans had bombarded um give me glow or whatever and then the give me glow lady finally reached out to her about doing swatches on you know darker skin because if you all notice give me glow only has swatches on you know caucasians and you know I'm not Caucasian, so it being swatched on her doesn't help me determine how it's actually going to look on me. I'm just kind of buying at my own risk. So, the Fancy Face Lover, y'all know she did a whole swatch video, like an hour long, talking about the brand and all that. So, of course, she was excited, she said, when the brand reached out to her, because, you know, it's a brand she actually likes. And then she said, just the way the lady handled the whole situation, asked her for a quote, then ladies talking about her and other black influencers she reached out to were charging too much. And then she, they was like, she put a one post about the Black Lives Matter. So she basically did like the bare minimum to make it seem like she wasn't racist, even though she didn't change any of the stuff that she was doing, which, you know, gave the underlying tone that you are racist. And, um... She was like, she's not going to buy from the brand anymore. I'm like, dang, it's messed up. Because I'm like, that is bogus. She's like, she DM'd the lady telling her, like, you know, she could work with whatever her budget is because she knows she's an indie brand. So she might not necessarily be able to afford what other people are doing. But she, at the same time, I kind of felt her point about, like, you know, how am I asking you for necessarily too much? She, Of course, she didn't disclose the amount she asked for. But it's like, if she had already bought all the stuff and you only had to send her a few shades, then... And then you're putting her work on your website to advertise like your products for however long you see fit based upon whatever contract she comes up with you. Like I didn't see it necessarily being an unreasonable price because, you know, but I guess when you can just do it yourself for free and people have been buying your products for a long time, it's probably an unreasonable price to you. I don't know, like, just all of what the Fancy Face said about her just gave me tart vibes. And I'm like, yeah, no. But my whole thing is, like, all these brands is doing stuff like that. You notice what happened to tart, right? So you should probably stop doing that shit. Because you see, don't nobody check for their asses no more. And they was on top of the world. Everybody was talking about them for two, three years or whatever. But I know when I first got on YouTube, it was all about tart and, like, Too Faced. And it's like, people still talk about Too Faced. But it's like, you notice you don't hear nobody talking about Tarte. Like, nobody. Like, it's it's crickets. They quieter than a church house mouse. Like, no, nobody's checking for them. So, it's like, you really want to act like them? You saw what happened to them. Why would you want to follow in that footstep? I don't get it. But, you know, teach his own. Whatever. Um, I just thought it was sad because I'm like, you know. They said, Tina said she had featured two people that um did, what do you call it? The um it, that had swatches of her products, but the people had bought the product. So again, it's like, are you really trying to fix the problem if you're only showing people that already bought your stuff? Because it was like, if you're really that concerned about it, you go, you know. But at the same time, I heard like, you know, um, I've seen other brands doing it. Like they ask people to do swatches on darker people and they still haven't done it either. So it's like, can you say it's just give me glow? I mean, obviously it looks like it's just give me glow. The fact that you can't respond at all 
but they be on there all the time. Like, I think I got three notifications from their brand today about stuff that I think that they trying to promote for Black Friday. But it's like, you couldn't answer Tina's message that she sent you how long time or how many several messages she sent you. But you can post all these things throughout the day. Okay. So, I'm like, I feel some type of way about it. Like, I own the stuff already. So, you know how it is when you own it. You're like, you're not necessarily going to declutter it. But it's like, you're not going to buy anything else. You're not going to promote them. That's kind of where I am because I'm like, I don't. I, I don't think that's cool at all. And y'all know I don't have no problem speaking out on stuff like that. I, if I'm not feeling it, I'm not feeling it. I ain't no problem saying it. So we're going to take this pink shade right here. I told y'all about this one. And then we're going to try to dab that one toward the middle or maybe toward just the front to get the brightness going on. And then we'll just pop that in the inner corner somewhere. I might just save this for a different time and do a palette mashup with um this palette once again since... Um, Matt and view is entirely too light for me. I don't know. We'll see. We're just going to cross that bridge when we get to it. But right now, we're going to put that pink shade I showed y'all on the lid. But yeah, so I was like, it's a really good video. Y'all need to go and check it out. Like, it's the it's the, at the very end of the video. She talks about other brands and why she got rid of them. But, like, that was the one that just, you know, had me like, well, damn. Okay. I mean, I had noticed they didn't have any. But, you know. You know how you see it, but you don't think it's, you know, like that big a deal. I figured she was still trying to recruit her losses from when she had tried to make that like sugar rush collection. She came out because that's when I first found out about it. She's trying to come out with like a sugar rush collection for Valentine's Day or whatever. And Tarte had, it's a funny thing, Tarte had already like, um, what was it? They had franchise the name or whatever. So she couldn't come out with the stuff like with the packaging she had or whatever. She just had to, um sell the stuff as singles and not call it the sugar rust collection or anymore more so but i heard like tart um gave her some money on it because you know that she couldn't use the stuff the products anymore because she um because they owned it so i i thought that was cool but it's like you know birds of a feather flock together so in fact that you can't come up with no swatches on nobody that looks like me after like all this time other than sending the ones that other people have bought your products with then you know uh, so i was like the fancy face i'm like mm, i feel some type of way now um they just came out with a palette thank goodness it's like a neutral one so it's like i'm not gonna feel out i'm missing out on anything and i was blessed enough to get the pastel bundle before i found out about all this so it's like i feel like i'm pretty set with the stuff that i got from them and i'm not really trying to be too concerned about it anymore so mm. anyway i'm gonna take this shade now and try to start tapping it toward the front like we just talked about and see how that's gonna work Ooh, yes. Look at that, y'all. Yeah, I'm just put it all over y'all. But yeah, don't definitely go check out the Fancy Faces video if you're a brown person like me who likes keeping glow so she can give you some more insight on it. Because I'm like, I'm pretty sure I told it exactly what she told it, but it's like, you know, it's different hearing it from... The, the horse's mouth, if you will, because she can tell you about the situation better than I can. I was just speaking on it since I watched the video, I think, like, a couple of days ago or whatever. I think it was a couple of days ago. And I just, like, mm, that just had me feeling some type of way out here, y'all. So I'm just taking the E27 that I used before and, like, putting it back into the crease with this brown jade. The ashy pink didn't really do anything as far as changing the tone for me, so it wasn't really necessary. And I feel like this color wasn't necessarily dark enough either this one right here it was better than the one that came in the palette but it's just kind of like, hmm. so as you can see we got two different eyes with these palettes so you don't have to worry about getting the same eye look just because they're both um rolls now i know she didn't roll us to death so you kind of like look ma'am um can you and these roses get your lives please i, I want to take a little more of this the red shade i mean that pinkish shade i just told you i was too dark that's the i mean not dark enough just kind of give some more dimension because I feel like this bright fuchsia over here is like just showing out in this eye just kind of like oh we're cute and simple and frosty and it's like I still want a little bit of smokiness so I'm trying to you know hook that up real quick y'all it's so hot up in here I need to probably turn the heat down in my grandma's house or maybe turn it off I don't know but I just didn't want it to be cold when you know we went to bed at night but it's quite toasty so I'm like maybe I should just turn the heat down Cause I think it's on like set to 75, but I think I'm gonna turn it down to like 72 or something. I don't know. Anyway, so I feel like I got a 
a shade that's really similar to this one from Terra Moon. It's called, what is it called? I think it's called Powdered Sugar or something like that. And I have my Terra Moons over here. So let me go grab it real quick and see if it's the same. Because I feel like it looks similar. I don't know if it's exactly going to be the same or not. And I think I caught that one on sale for like five bucks or something like that. So that's why I be talking about with like the multi-chromes and stuff. When um the bigger brands are coming out with the tri-chromes and all that stuff. It's like any brand has been doing that like forever. Not to mention, even if I didn't get it from Pat McGrath, I probably could have got it from like, what's that brand? Um, Luxie Beauty for like five dollars. I had to go get my book of shadows. I hope y'all are enjoying that um series. I literally just started it like last Sunday though. So you've only seen one video. This should be the shade right here, Powder Sugar yeah so try to swatch it at an angle you can see it it's not exactly the same you can't see on camera but like it has a um shift to it like um that one does i put it in the inner corner of my eye on one video but like when i'm looking at it from this angle they look like the exact same color so you have to see it at like the angle i'm looking at it but they are the exact same color and that one was like five or seven dollars so I feel like it gives off a little bit more mint than it does the lavender, but you can see the lavender and the mint shift in it. The only thing that sucks, like, when it's on camera, you can't see it. Let me see. Can I put it in the mirror and then you can see it that way? Okay. No, it's not working. But yeah, because y'all, it, it shifts exactly the same pretty much as this shade right here and this palette. And this one you can only buy on her website. So, my thoughts on this on these palettes. I like each one for different reasons. But like, if I had to take one to go, it would be the last one I used. Just because, like I said, I just found uh, a shade in my Terra Moon singles that was pretty much the same and then the color story of this one it was the one that was, i was least excited about but i was like i'm gonna get all of them because you know plus it has a shade that looks similar to fuchsia flame which is my favorite shade in the um rose decadent palette so it's like it i already have the similar shade this shade i can't use then this shade i have similar in a single and y'all know she always puts gold and everything so it's just kind of like i'm not really concerned about the gold too much oh crap i put my did I put my inner corner brush back before I used it? I feel like I did. Hopefully. Yeah, I dropped it back in here before I used it, y'all. I need to get out of here, motherfucker. I need to calm down. Okay, so. Or am I just sitting on it? No. Okay, we're going to take the champagne shade and put it in the inner corner. But yeah, so I feel like. What seems like a more peachy champagne shade? Anyway, point is. My favorite one is, um, believe it or not, is this one. The risk, what is it, Risque Rose? This is my favorite one. And then I like this Interstellar Icon one. And then dead last is the Flora um, Fantasia. But you know, I, all of them will get used. You know, we'll do some palette mashups alongside the Viseart, um palettes. Like I have... Um, three or four matte palettes of them. I want to use the colorful one. I haven't used the editorial brights one yet. So maybe I'll do a look with that one, take some purples out of there and use this palette with this shimmer on the lid again to have an idea of, you know, how it's going to look. So now we're going to get into swatching this one right here. And then the other two, I'll do comparisons and swatches up on another um, post. Basically, I'm going to go on IG and swatch all the other palettes together. I'm just trying to get this one out the way since we already here, sis. And these were the ones I was most excited about swatching because, of course, y'all know this is my favorite color story. So, this is what Shantakai one looks like if you have not watched my video. This is part of their Hummingbird collection. I think this came out last year. I really wanted it, but I was just like, I can't justify that price point, especially when I don't know anything about this brand. And high-end brands tend to not have the kind of, you know, pigmentation that Pat McGrath normally has with her high-end stuff. So, I'd be kind of hesitant to just buy it and be out here risking it all, especially with the price points people be charging. So... I was like, mm, I don't know. Then the Charlotte Tilbury one came out for the holidays, and I was like, hmm. So everybody seems to be having a trend, because as you can see, this one and the Shantakai one look pretty similar. Now, mind you, the Shantakai one has a matte. Like, this shade right here is matte. But as you can see, the color stories are quite similar. I feel like this one looks more, um, sorry, this one looks more goldy pinkish, if you will. And this one is a little bit more bronzy, but... For the most part, I feel like both of those have the same one. The only one I feel like that has any sort of halfway difference to it is Mother's Palette. Because she has this darker 
bump shade and this shade right here shifts. The other ones don't. So we're gonna start off with, of course, the gold shade. So I'm gonna take Mother's Gold. So I'm gonna do Mother's Gold, I'm gonna do Charlotte's Gold, and I'm gonna do High's, um Gold last. So it's gonna go Mother, Charlotte, Shantikai. That's how we're gonna do these colors. So there's no confusion you know exactly what's going on now mind you if i remember correctly charlotte's is supposed to be a topper so don't expect it to be looking like you know other stuff gonna be looking um let me see so that's pat mcgrath that's um charlotte and that's shantakai so these two are the holiday palettes from 2020 this is pat mcgrath's holiday palette that's charlotte's holiday palette the, what are the, the topper dazzler things or whatever and then that's the Shantikai Hummingbird palette. So as you can see, all of them have different glitter particles. Like Mother's has more pink glitter particles in it. But Charlotte's just seem to be classic, you know, topperish type gold shimmer shades. And then this one is last. Now we're going to get into the blues, which is, of course, we all know my favorite ones. So I'm going to swatch Mother's Blue. And like I told you, we're going to do the same order. We're going to do Mother. We're going to do Charlotte. And then we're going to do Shantikai. So, you already see that Charlotte's is much deeper and darker and smokier than Mother's is because Mother's has a shift. But I feel like the Shantikai one and the um, Charlotte one are so much similar. It's just um, Shantikai seems to be a bit grayer. See, like that one's glare. That one seems to be more navyish blue, black. And then y'all know Mother shifts to a purple. So, but since I had all three, I just had to swatch all three. I couldn't help myself. And I had to compare all three. So it's like I'll compare all three formulas in a video if y'all want. But I'd probably do that like on IG. I wouldn't necessarily do that here because I figured y'all wouldn't watch that. Now I'm going to swatch the shade Blue Blood. But obviously we don't really have anything that comes close to it. So I'm going to just swatch the mattes that are. Uh, I'm going to just swatch whatever's similar in here. Well nothing's really similar. But I'm going to just swatch some stuff in here to do that with. Hmm. There's really nothing to swatch that tone into. So that's what makes Mother's different from everybody else. Because this is the Shantakai shade. You see it's so ashy because it's close to my skin tone. I just swatched the bronze shade in here for that one. I don't know why though because I'm going to have to swatch it against Divine Dahlia next. And then that's, um, what is it called? Um, Blue Bud. So obviously those aren't exactly the same. The last one we're going to swatch is a champagne-y looking shade. Wait, no. I already used the champagne looking shade, right? Okay, yeah. So we're just going to go into um, the Dahlia one. There's no shade in the um, Chantecaille one that looks similar to that one. So let's skip that. I think I screwed up a couple of these swatches too. Because I think I was supposed to take this shade for the champagne one. Not that bronzy shade I took. But, you know, it's too late now. So we're here. It's too late. And then I'm taking this Charlotte Tilbury shade last. Which is the darkest one she had. So as you can see, these are the ones. This is um, Pat, Charlotte, Shantikai. So they have somewhat similar tones in them, but none of them are like truly exact. Like the blues are different. I feel like for the most part, the golds have different shimmers in them. And then the... um bronzes have different tones of bronze so everybody's is somewhat different enough to if you wanted to get all three you could obviously you don't need all three because they're just all similar tones and like glittery toppers but we know i'm the crazy lady who needs to have any palette that is blue so that's how i ended up with all three plus i wanted to try shantakai and i never did and it was on sale now that i think about it the shantakai palette the cool tone one has a shade that is similar to um blue blood so i have to try to swatch that when i get home for y'all on ig so you can see but yes those are all the swatches and y'all heard my thoughts i like all three of the palettes i am definitely impressed with them i told you my order i i like this palette first the one i just did all the swatches with second and then the one on this eye last but i'm gonna play around with it a little more and then maybe i like it a little bit better it's just like all first impression i definitely like Risque Rose the best, and I figured I would just based upon, like, the tones that were in them. Uh, Y'all know I like a smoky eye, but I feel like this will pair really well with if you have the, um, 
the Mothership One palette. That was the first one I bought, of course, because of the blue. I've been a blue girl since day one when it came to eyeshadow. And then I feel like this one will go well with the Divine Rose and the Divine Rose too. Like you can add a pop with the Divine Rose to this one. Or you can add a pop to the Rose Decadence like you just saw me do. So I'm going to try to do another look with this and the Divine Rose to give you better ideas of what to pair that one with. And then the last one I feel like will go best with... Um, I'm thinking about pairing this one with the Mothership 3. I feel like it might be a good accent to that because it has a unique dark purple thing to it. And then like this purple that's on my leg could be a good inner corner for that. Plus there are some darker bats in there that work out nicely. So I brought that one with me and I might try to do some looks with these Sunday on some palette mashups. And then y'all see those probably like around Thanksgiving time because I have um pre-filmed all the way to like, um, um what is it? It's like pretty much till damn near the beginning of december and i even started filming like my favorites of uh, best of 2020 videos i did the foundation the primer and the concealer last saturday so i've been a busy woman but anyway those are my thoughts on these products i have talked your ear off enough i meant to try this mascara out but i just didn't want to open up another mascara but i'll try this mascara out when i try the highlighter since i still have to wait on that so We'll try that out, then, that out then. But anyway, I hope this was helpful. I hope you all enjoyed this video. Remember, y'all are diamonds. I know this is about to be long as hell, so I hope you had brought a snack at the beginning because y'all know when I talk about Pat, it takes forever. But I'll see you guys in the next one. Remember, y'all are diamonds. Bye.